What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you one of the huge breakthroughs in AI image generation, stable cascade, and the absolute simplest way you can install it and use it on your own PC completely for free. So without further ado, let's begin. My previous AI videos around things like this mainly included scripts that I created to help simplify things. But to be honest, the absolute simplest way that you can get this set up and working is by downloading a piece of software called Pinocchio. Simply head across to Pinocchio.computer linked down below and choose download over here. Then choose Windows, Mac or whatever you're on and start the download. Of course, installation steps may be different for each of the different platforms, but they're all listed out here. Open the zip when it's done downloading. Then if there's just one file, you should be able to just double click and run it. More followed by run anyway. And now we'll wait for it to install. Now we have an icon on our desktop and the actual software has opened up. First of all, we'll set a place to save all of the big models and things like that that we'll be downloading. Set this to a drive with preferably more space, which may not be your C drive with Windows. If you have another one, that's perfect. If not, well, you can leave it as the default. I'll be changing it to a different drive and I'll be setting the dark theme. I'll save it where it'll then set up everything and we're in. What you need to do now is click visit discover page. Then when you're here, you should immediately see stable cascade. Alternatively, you can search for cascade and it should pop up. We'll click it and choose download. It'll prompt us that we need to install a bunch of things. Just click install and it'll all be handled for you. When it's done, I'll click OK, click download, and we've successfully installed it, or at least prepared to. We'll click it to open it up. Then in here, choose install once more. I'll be changing it to dark mode quickly. There we go. Install and install once more. This will make sure everything else is prepared. We'll click OK. And finally, when it's done, we can just click start where it'll fire up, download the actual stable cascade model, another maybe 10 gigs, and there we go. Now you'll eventually see a link, simply click this, and it'll open in your browser. This is Stable Cascade. So what sets Stable Cascade apart from normal stable diffusion models? Well, A, it supports text, B, it's supposed to be a lot faster and supports images surprisingly quite a bit bigger, just natively. That's one of the side effects of them trying to make it faster, smaller, etc. If we expand advanced options, you'll find a bunch of things like negative prompt, seed, width, height, number of images, etc. Let's go for a chipmunk in a red hoodie holding a sign saying coffee. Good enough. We'll run. Not too sure if the quotes will really matter there, but now unfortunately, whenever I generate an image, it seems to crash my recording software, if not my entire PC. So I was able to generate an image without recording. And of course I can open it up here. This is what came out. It's super good for what it is. It's 1024 by 1024. There's tons of detail. And of course, writing is mostly correct. They probably would have taken one to two tries and it would have said something a bit better, I would think. But as for holding a sign that wasn't included, the one thing I did notice is that the more text I put here, the longer that these generations seem to take. Now that's the huge downside about Stable Cascade currently in this extremely early state. If we have a look at the Stable Cascade announcement from the 12th of February, scrolling down to just above comparison, you'll see all info about the different models. But looking down here, VRAM requirements for inference can be kept to approximately 20 gigabytes. Now I've got a 3080 Ti, which sounds super powerful, but it's only got 12 gigabytes of VRAM and running the software completely eats my entire system. That's why when I get it to generate an image, it crashes if anything else is using my graphics card. Obviously your experience may be different, but on a graphics card like this, it takes around a minute or so to generate an image and you can see it slowly come together in the software. So while you'll get the best performance on a 90 series graphics card, like a 30 or 4090, or even a V100 or something running on the cloud, you can still do it on lesser graphics cards. It'll just take quite a bit longer. So would I recommend this software in its current state? Well, it's cool to play around with. And of course it's even better that we can get much improved text quality and things like that on a local free model. Model. But of course, using this like we do Stable Diffusion is a little bit out of reach for most people for now. That being said, running this software does seem to max out my PC. But in the video linked in the description down below, you'll find out how to use Stable Cascade in Automatic 1111's Stable Diffusion Web UI. This uses a ton less VRAM and actually generates images faster in my experience. But anyways, that's really about it for this Stable Cascade guide video. You now know how to install it and get going with this little demo piece of software. So thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.